Hello, we have a story for you. This story is about a Poketuber whose community has turned against him. And if you are a Poketuber, be sure to not mess up. For the things you do can come back and haunt you. This story is called The One Time I Messed Up with XRX Games. What's good ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Raging Trainers channel where today your boy is making a special guest appearance to read some of the creepy pasta Raging Trainer has gone ahead and made for us. Now, it is some spooky stuff so make sure you guys are, you know, tucked away, lights on, lights off if you're feeling brave, but we're going to be reading it today on his channel. I never thought I'd be the kind of person to feel the weight of the world on my shoulders, but that was before I became a famous Pokétuber. My channel Elite Battler was built on the competitive prowess in Pokemon battles. I had thousands of subscribers who looked up to me and I prided myself on being a role model in the community. But all it took was one mistake to unravel everything. It started innocently enough. I was filming a video for my latest competitive strategy showcasing a new team I'd be working on. I was excited to share my insights to help others climb the ranks in the Pokemon League. But during the recording, I made a critical error. I miscalculated a move and instead of securing a victory, I lost the match in a humiliating fashion. I laughed it off at first, thinking my audience would appreciate my honesty. Hey, even the best mess up sometimes, I said. Trying to keep the mood light, but as soon as I uploaded the video, the comments section exploded. Unsubscribed, you're a joke. Can't believe I ever looked up to you. Stick to the casual battles, you can't handle the pressure. I was taken aback. I had always been open about my mistakes, but this felt different. The community I had nourished for years was turning against me, and the hate messages flooded in like a tidal wave. I tried to respond to some of them, to explain that everyone makes mistakes, but my words fell on deaf ears. Days turned into weeks, the negativity only grew. I found myself obsessively checking my notifications, each ping sending a jot of anxiety through me. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I, was, I felt like I was drowning in a sea of vitriol. The comments haunted me echoing in my mind like a relentless mantra. You're, You're a failure. failure. You, you don't, don't deserve, deserve this platform. platform. I started to isolate myself, avoiding social media and the very community I once loved. I would sit in my darkened room, staring at my computer screen, the glow illuminating my face like a ghostly light. I tried to record new content, but every time I hit the record button, I froze. The fear of messing up again paralyzed me. One night, I received a message that sent chills down my spine. It was from an anonymous account. The username, a jumble of letters and numbers. The message read, You think you can just walk away? We won't let you. You owe us. I stared at the screen, my heart racing. Who was this person? What did they want from me? I felt a cold sweat trickle down my back. I had always been the target for trolls, but this felt different, more sinister. I brushed it off as a just another hate message, but deep down, I knew it was more than that. The next day, I decided to log back into my channel, hoping to find some support among my loyal fans. But as I scrolled through the comments, I was met with a barrage of insults and threats. You, you will never be good, good enough, one read. We'll make sure everyone knows you're a fraud. I felt my stomach drop. It was as if the entire community had turned into a mob and I was the scapegoat. I tried to reach out to a few fellow PokerTubers for advice, but they all seemed hesitant to associate with me. I was toxic now a pariah in the community I had once called home. As the days dragged on, I became increasingly paranoid. I started to notice strange things happening around me. I would hear whispers outside my window at night, hushed voices that seemed to be discussing me. I convinced myself that it was just my imagination, but the feeling of being watched never left me. One evening, I decided to take a break and go for a walk to clear my head. The streets were eerily quiet, the only sound being the crunch of leaves beneath my feet. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was following me. I turned around, but there was no one there. Just the shadows of the trees stretching out in the dim light. When I returned home, I found the front door slightly ajar. My heart raced as I pushed it open, the creaking sound echoing in the silence. I stepped inside, and my breath caught in my throat. My room was a mess, papers scattered everywhere, my computer screen flickering ominously. And then I saw it. On my desk, a note, written in jagged handwriting. You can't escape your mistakes. We'll be watching. Panic surged through me. I grabbed my phone to call for help, but my hands trembled so violently that I dropped it. The screen cracked against the floor, and I cursed under my breath. I felt trapped like a rat in a maze with no way out. I stumbled back, my mind racing. Who were these people? Why were they doing this? I had made a mistake, yes, but I never expected it to spiral into something so dark and twisted. 
and needed to confront this head on to reclaim my life and my channel. The next day I decided to go live. I wanted to address my audience directly, to lay everything bare. I set up my camera, my heart pounding in my chest. As I hit the go live button, I felt a mix of fear and determination. Hey everyone, I began, my voice shaky. I know things have been rough lately, I messed up and I'm sorry, but I'm still here and I want to make things right. As I spoke, I could see the comments flooding in. Some were supportive, but many were still laced with venom. You're pathetic, one read. Just give up already. But I pressed on, pouring my heart out. I talked about the pressure of being in the spotlight, the fear of failure, and the toll it had taken on my mental health. I hoped that by being vulnerable, I could bridge the gap that had formed between me and my audience. Then, as I was about to wrap up, a new comment appeared. You think this will save you? You're still a fraud. I felt a chill run down my spine. I glanced at the username and it was the same anonymous person that had messaged me before. My heart raced as I realized that this person was still watching, still waiting for me to slip up again. Suddenly, my screen flickered and the stream cut out. Panic surged through me as I frantically tried to restart it, but nothing worked. I was left staring at a blank screen. The silence, deafening. In that moment, I felt utterly defeated. I had tried to reach out, to connect, but it felt like the walls were closing around me. I slumped back in my chair, tears streaming down my face. I had built my entire identity around this community, and now it felt like it was crumbling beneath me. Why am I so dumb? But then, something shifted. I remembered the support I had received from my true friends and loyal fans over the years. I wiped my tears. I took a deep breath and I realized that I couldn't let fear dictate my life any longer. I decided to take a stand. I would not let this anonymous Tom Winter control me. I would gather evidence, document everything, and reach out to the platform for help. I would also focus on creating content that I truly resonated with, rather than trying to please everyone else. With renewed determination, I began to formulate a plan. I would share my journey, the ups and the downs, and encourage others to speak out against bullying and harassment. I would turn this negative experience into a source of strength, not just for myself, but for anyone who felt alone in their struggles. As I closed my laptop that night, I felt a sense of clarity and I was ready to reclaim my narrative and build a community based on support and understanding. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was no longer afraid. I was ready to fight back and show the world that I wouldn't be silenced. And with that, I took the first step towards healing, ready to face whatever came next. Right guys, so that was the creepy pasta. If you got chills on your spine, make sure you're commenting down below at what part really got you. And guys, make sure you are subscribing to Ranger Trainer. Top guy, top bloke. You've heard it from a Brit. And I will peace out for now. Love you all. And uh, yeah, Rajin, over to you, my friend. Over to you. X, thank you so much for the wonderful, wonderful collaboration. You didn't have to, but you did. And I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. X's channel will be in the description below. Give him some love. Wonderful PokeTuber, that guy. And if you haven't heard the last story, it'll be right here on the screen. Go give her a watch. Until then, goodbye.